bridging the gap. Back in action. It's that six, that Dr. J, that Julius. We here. We gonna make yes, Irving. <laughs> That's how they announce it, man. The announcers back in the day were fire too. Right, right. For real though, they really they had like each arena had its own staple and yeah, personality. Yeah, it was kind of dope. The Charlotte Hornets kind of getting there right now with mm-hmm. the guy that they got. He even coined his own phrase. I think he's starting to get to it. I can't remember what it was, but. You know, it's young and electrifying over there. So it's some good action. Right, right. Yeah. Man, if you're tuned in now, you're watching the Bridging the Gap podcast or you're listening to it on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, all those good things. I'm your host, young OG, Ryan Yates. And with my OG here, Julian King. Uh, you guys know the story by now. We're here in Dubai. Um Business partners. This is my high school coach. We're now international business partners building a basketball brand called Hoop Mountain Dubai, Hoop Mountain DXB on Instagram, Hoop Mountain.ae online, new website. Please go check out my work. <laughs> Please go look at it. Um, all things basketball, all things culture related to basketball. We're here to build, to grow. Um, to kind of, you know, share those relationships we've built and those lessons we've learned through the game with those people that we've encountered here. Yep. Um, I think we're doing a good job with that so far, OG. I think we're doing an outstanding job. Man. Outstanding. We're, without um, intentionally trying to do it, we're changing lives. Yeah. You know, yeah. changing lives, man. Yeah. We're giving people new perspectives on how they should approach things. Man. And... Really, that opportunity to do that is a blessing in its own right, right? Because everybody is incapable, one, right? And everybody doesn't take that um, responsibility as as strongly as we do. We a lot really of people are do. capable. Yeah. It depends on what level that they're offering that mm-hmm. part of themselves. But it's, the thing is, are you willing to do it? Yeah. And are your attentions pure? Right. Right. And so we're growing, um, even with the juggernauts that are here. <laughs> Sometimes people are juggernauts not because they're better, but because they got more resources or longevity, time, right? I was just thinking about how <clears throat> sometimes like McDonald's and other brands, Nike, Coke, Pepsi, they just win because people just like, I know them. Not because it's better or anything, but it's like, mm, I don't yeah. want to think. Sometimes it's just like, you can't use uh, McDonald's. Those are two bad examples. Why not? You talk about sometimes I see, I see people talking about, like, I want to pick between this and that. Let's say if you're out of town somewhere, out of country, like, I'm just going to go where I know the name, where I know where I'm going to get. No, nah, I, I don't think like that. We, we talking about they're, they're number one in their lane. Not, not because, not just because they're of their, their, Brand name recognition because they have the better quality. No, McDonald's and Pepsi, they don't have the better quality. No, no, anymore. no, no. You said Nike, McDonald's. Well, right? no, no, no. I was, I was just saying, and just, well, let's not throw Nike in the middle of that because, yeah, like, but, but let's not, uh, let's well, McDonald's and we talking about, too. we talking about a fast food burger. It, they burger they than five murder guys. Burger King. They, they don't murder five guys. I'm speaking more so fast food, man. We ain't talking about sit down and eat and all that stuff, whatever. We talking about guys fast. fast. We talking about no, it's not. You can't. It ain't no drive through. Okay, it's not fast food. All right, okay. we'll, Shake Shack. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? That's regional. <laughs> but but that comes to my point though, to where it's like when you started off smaller, you competing with the name sometimes, even if your quality better, right? Shake, Shake Shack ain't that great. <laughs> no, it's a, it's, it's a, hey, what a burger! You ever had that? It's West Coast. It's awesome. Is it better than In and Out? Yeah, yeah, yeah In and Out yeah, trash, low yeah, key yeah, for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah, a yeah. Texas talk. But I was just talking about like in general. Yeah, like you can go to a McDonald's anywhere, and you know you're gonna, you know what you're getting. You know what I'm saying? They, come on, man. Yeah. It's hard to mess up McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? But they damn sure do, though. No, not that much. I've been to other places, man. McDonald's McDonald's best thing is their breakfast, by far. Oh, come on. No, no. Come on. The, the, the breakfast is trash. Come. Here in Dubai, the breakfast is all right. But the breakfast in in total is garbage to me. Oh, no, man. That that steak, egg, and cheese, or that uh, that that McGriddle, on, that man. McGriddle anything, and that McMuffin. When you talk about fast food breakfast, you're talking about like um, 
Hardy, she wasn't. No, no, no. Come on, man. Stop saying I ain't trying to get a heart attack. <laughs> All um, of your heart attack. We talk, no, we talk about Chick-fil-A. That breakfast. That's different. Fire. That's high level. That's high level. Man, like, That's high level. Yeah. I'm saying McDonald's, and we talk about when you think about 10 different categories, McDonald's is seven or above in every category. That's why it's better. Damn, you give it that much? Yeah. See, I think this the is where fries are better. Everybody else, Wendy's fries. I think were Popeyes. I think super trash. I think Popeyes like got the best fries. Mm. I think Popeyes got the best fries. Yeah, okay. They 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 up there. They up there. You know, like checkers type vibe. Yeah, but we talking about burgers though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all, yeah. That's all I'm saying, yo. Yeah, yeah. Like burgers. Yeah, no, no, no. White no. Castle fries. Nah. White Castle. You don't even know about trash. Crystal. That's the nah. that's the southern version of White Castle. Mm. So it's like it's like Carl Juniors and uh and Hardy's and yeah, how they yeah, yeah they man. switch up names. Yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, sometimes when you just coming up, even if it's a better product, and you're dealing with somebody that got 10, 15, 20 years already in that demographic or in that area area, it's tough to compete just because you're the new kid. Yeah, the yeah. I'm, the McDonald's is over here, Wallow's burgers is over here. I'm going to McDonald's. I don't know Wallow. Yeah, until until the buzz starts to go around. You're yeah, like, oh, but, right, okay. Wallow but spot then, fire. I see Wallow. Yeah, I'm like, it's good. But I'm in a hurry. I yeah. got 30 minutes to get to my job. You know what I'm saying? Wallow, I go in there, I get conversation. Yeah. My order is 40 minutes. Cool. McDonald's, I know I can go right through there. Bing, 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 bang. I'm gone. Yeah. And yeah. I know what I'm I know what it, I know what my Big Mac's gonna taste like. Mm, and you know what your stomach gonna feel oh, like. Man. So no matter what, you take shortcuts. If you choose somebody just for name and it's bad product, yeah. you're going to feel it one way or the other, whether it's in that bathroom <laughs> on the court. <laughs> That's how it go. Yeah. But man, yeah. we're going to have to have a talk about that, that fast food. Yeah, stuff. We, Look, and, a, and there's a lot of people out there going to be like, yo, McDonald's, we know what you're talking about, Yates, but McDonald's is still good. <laughs> we're going to see. We're going to take a all poll. All right. Like, I, I think the McDonald's breakfast is high level, though. But oh. and besides the filet of fish, I ain't really eating nothing out of that. Come on, man. Yeah. But, you know, it's love. Um, I don't even have to do a mental health check. And I think you're good. I feel like, you know, the energy there. I yeah, know you're we, tired. We, we, I know I'm, you're tired. I'm, I'm exhausted. We, <laughs> we down to the wire, baby. <laughs> yeah. December 9th. Yo, it's here. We're almost at the end of the first half of the season. Uh, we're going to have a nice team camp and all that other good stuff. A lot of life-changing moments happening around us. Yeah. You know, some of those things. Oh, I'm going to have a surprise for us going, coming out of the new year, too, for the pod. Mm. Some more, more energy, you know? You know. We're trying to get everything right. I hope it ain't nothing where it involves you counting. <laughs> Your math is terrible. I ain't going to say no. I ain't going to give any concept or any circumstance in terms of what I'm talking about. But man, you told me one thing, the next thing I know it's another thing. I'm like, man, your math is terrible. Where'd you go to school? Man, listen, man. Oh, man. I, I went to a great school, man. man you know boy, tell me this is this, this, and then I get to the spot, it's this. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> shh. We all love, man. On, man. You brought enough to get in. Come on, man. <laughs> but no, nah, I, I feel good too. Um, I'm excited about watching this next half of the NBA season and taking some time over break <clears throat> to catch up on college basketball. Cause it's picking up. We know that season goes by fast, but yeah. there's some names out there that's that's worth listening to, um, and it's worth watching out for, and seeing what some of these coaches do. Cause that's the one great thing about college basketball. All of it is systems based. Cause each coach plays a completely different system based on their players, so you get to see kind of the creativity amongst basketball players and teams. I haven't jumped into it yet, just because I'm still in college football. Yeah, I know that's your thing. You're a tailgate guy. One, come on, man. You a tailgate guy for it sure. Depends what climate it is. If it's if it's Michigan yeah. versus Michigan State, I ain't going. Yeah, you inside. I, mean, I ain't going. But no. if you like, you know, Georgia area, yeah, I go out. Yeah, yeah. This time of year, it's beautiful. For the, for those that that aren't that aren't football guys, um, the one thing about American football that's dope, especially in college and high school, is they have these tailgates. You know, you can you want to break down what a tailgate is like. Man, man, this, it's this just, is for our international guys and girls and, and people who listen and, and don't know. It's it's basically like a glorified um backyard barbecue cookout mm -hmm. um in a big social environment with everybody that's rooting for the same team or even the opposing yeah, teams. Yeah. And everybody just gets together, brings all this food, they're they're grilling out in the in the parking lot. Um 
they got music playing, they got drinks everywhere, and people are just going from spot to spot, yeah. talking about the game and stuff like that. So it's just a, um, it's like a, it's not like it's like a block man, party, it's, it's potluck like a, type thing. It's like a a non traditional uh, family reunion, man. Where like, you know everybody probably drink a little too much. Yeah, before you know? the game, yeah, it is literally the- like. The coach used a Michigan Ohio State example. It's like Michigan's fans are all on this side, oh. and Ohio State's on this side, and then they're mixing. Yeah, some people, somebody might have the chili since it's that time of the year. They yeah. might have the chili out the back of the truck. They might have the Franks, and yeah. then, you know they're coming together drinking. And it's competitive, competitive, talking it's, trash. You know what I'm, saying? I'm I'm Michigan State. You're Michigan. You know what I'm saying we who got the best chili? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. So it's it's competitive. That's the one thing about sports that is amazing is the culture that builds around it, right? Like you just think about all those little things that come from relationships or friendships. Think about people who met their husband or wife at a game or their best friend just sitting there arguing with each other. That's what's dope. That's the culture we're trying to bring around. Even though Alabama and Auburn went into four overtimes. Yeah. Somebody met their significant other there that night. Right, right. <laughs> and somebody might propose at that game yeah. next week in the middle or something like yeah. that, something crazy. Um, yeah. But but that's dope. Um, tailgating, man. It makes you think back to college. That you know, wild. we tried to, you know, they tried to tailgate at Coppin State, right? Come on. Now, let me look at the camera. We ain't got no football team. Yeah. <laughs> so you tailgating yeah. in the middle of winter. For the homecoming for Coppin State versus Morgan State. Basketball. Everybody in the city of Baltimore is coming out. But, man, you can't be out there in February trying to tailgate. Like, no, sir. You know what I'm saying? No, sir. Basketball. Pass me a piece of that. Pass me one of them ribs. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. That don't, that don't work. No, nah, not for that. Not in but Baltimore. People do it, though. People yeah. do it, man. No, that stuff's fun. But, you know, we'll, we'll be catching up on that stuff and getting into it. But let's give our, you know, our NBA update. Um, We got to start with <clears throat> apologizing all right to the phoenix suns mm. uh mainstream media has done a terrible job um us being people who like to bridge the gap is we're going to talk about what hoopers talk about we haven't said a word about it um i do remember saying that i thought they they would be competitive in the season you said you, you weren't sure if they would be you know the top still unless yeah we, certain people took some jumps and, and got yeah. Stuff better, but the Phoenix Suns, as of today, on a Monday that we're recording, on a 16 game win streak, they just smacked both New York teams on a back to back, right on the road, um, having lost in a month. We, I didn't necessarily say they wouldn't be competitive. I said yeah, they, they ain't going back to the finals. Yeah, I'm just they ain't yeah going back to the finals. Yeah, I don't know now. I'm I'm looking at them like, you know, they're handling business quietly, going about growing, getting better as a team. And you still think about, we talked about it on the last pod with uh, TJ when I talked about just experience and how that changes things. Now, he and I did have a, a private conversation just the other day and we were talking about them and he asked me, do I think the Lakers would still be able to make it to the Western Finals? Hmm. I said, if this is this is only my personal opinion, I think they would only make it to the Western Finals if they have a complete coaching change. Mm-hmm. I, I just think they do. They need a different voice. I, that's what I think because uh, yeah. there's too many, too many um, big time personalities there. And I said we talked about Phoenix, and he said they have no chance. I said, well, if it's Golden State and not the Lakers, I think Phoenix matches up better with Golden State than anybody. Yeah. You know, yeah, and then adding JaVel McGee, which is big for them in their second unit, big someone a champ, right? He revitalized his career better than anybody that I know. Just, no, even though didn't. he already had it, no, not better, but no, just no, the just no. the face of it. No, he just got out of Washington. That is, yeah, <laughs> it's big time because he always had the tools, athleticism. Yeah, and right? when you leave, when you leave the Wizards, yeah. you typically get better. That's true. We and we've said that. <laughs> you know, that is part of how it goes, yeah. man. But. I, I think they're serious still. Um, when you just look at the Phoenix team, both their leaders, talking about Monty Williams and Chris Paul, right? They're connected. They're talking about a coaching change. They're the farthest thing from needing that, right? right? They're one and the same in that experience. And then they have the right group of young guys around. And Landry Shamit is a big-time addition, too, and mm-hmm. they got him in the trade because mm-hmm. he can score on his own. 
And he's going to be really good defensively, too. So there's no drop off. And everybody mm-hmm. from Michael Bridges, he took a leap. You took a Cameron Johnson. He's probably going to be up. It's going to be more like a contract year for him that he's going to be up for. So if he has a season like Michael did last year, you're going to pay him. But he's going to be performing. And you just got CP3 at the helm of that controlling. And then you got a young stud like Devin Booker, who looks like he's he's picking up his he's picking his yeah. spots even better. And he's better at three-point shooting right now. Those are those two are the usual suspects. They just need um Aiden to be consistent. Consistent. And they need the young guys just to step up a little bit. That's it. Because mm-hmm. what happened to them last year. <laughs> They had Milwaukee down yep. before Giannis said, let me do this to get us you know, over the hump. Right. But CP3 and Devin just ran out of gas, man. L- little guys, right? Ran out of gas. Too much. Man. Right. got to do too much. Yeah. So I, I like them. I like, I see what they're doing. I do think that they, they need to be paid attention to. And they're, and they're playing with motivation, man. They got in-house situations they're trying to deal with too. So, you know, True. how do you deal with stuff? You know, you, you go to work. True. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. and and you playing for a guy like Monty who's been through so much. And you know, he's a he's a player's guy to where he's like he's wearing his heart on his sleeve for you. Yeah. So that's a whole nother thing. Every time you walk into the gym, you playing for that guy, it's like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna make it happen. So Phoenix, listen, we hear you loud and clear. You may not even want anybody to talk because y'all look like y'all about business right now. Yeah, let's so keep, let's keep up. You know, let's uh let's keep it going, you know. Um but with that, you talk about the defending champ. You've talked about their their lack of toughness, to, so to speak, by losing P.J. Tucker. But now, you know, they went and made a move, got a got a bully. You know what I'm saying? They got they picked up Boogie for one year, um, non guaranteed deal. And I think Brooke Lopez has been battling some in- injury, and that's been a bit tough for them. You know, they started to win some games and string some together, but toughness is what they've been lacking. Yeah. You know, I love Cousins' game. And these last few years, you know, um, he personally has changed his, you know, his outlook on his career a little bit, you know, just from the outside looking in. And he's more likable. But I just don't know if he's enough. Yeah. Because he's not going to be on the floor as much as PJ is. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the thing, you know. A locker room presence. And he did, he was a presence for the Clippers last year. Right, in the playoffs and stuff too. Right. Did Locker room playoffs. presence, I'm not so sure about, but he was a presence for the Clippers in a certain aspect. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I, I I think, I mean, it's interesting. I, I don't think it moves the needle for them. I think it does help them a little bit. It gives them a little interest. It doesn't make them worse. No, it, it does. Sure. It doesn't hurt them for sure. For sure. He's Definitely a good, that, if that's your insurance policy, it's yeah. pretty good because you know, you can, you can you can bring it up and just dump it down and he'll get a bucket. Now, the, the, this next piece, um, Isaiah Thomas, you know. Which Isaiah, one? Isaiah, not Zeke. Okay. Not Zeke, okay. not Zeke. Isaiah Thomas, present day, uh, from out of Washington. Now, this is. Brinks truck, okay. Brinks truck. Isaiah got, you know, one of the craziest stories. Um, his is tough to watch because he hasn't been able to, to bounce back. You know, between him and Melo, right? Mm-hmm. Melo was out, he was out. And we were sitting there looking like, well, it looks like these guys can go, right? This is this is one of those things where sometimes being six eight gives you afford you an extra thirty chances, right? Yeah. So I, I T he's been, you know, he had a couple little contracts here and there. Right now he's leading the uh, U S team in the World Cup qualifier. Um, he just he put up like twenty two against Cuba and a go ahead three pointer to, to seal the game. Man, I'm rooting for I T. Just yeah. to get one more shot and one in the league, two years or whatever, somewhere just to just to you know make a full circle so he can get back in there and, and compete at the highest level. Yeah, he he definitely deserves another shot. Um, you know, of course, I don't know him personally. I don't know if you do or not, but the two things that Melo had going for him that it didn't, you know, one his height, um, two, everybody in the league likes Melo. Yeah. You know, you don't you didn't get that sense with 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 IT, you know, and, um, you know, the one thing you you can't afford to do if you're a little guard, mm. you can't come in there talking trash. You can't come in there trying to change something until you, you know, what I'm saying until you're at a situation where when you speak, everybody listens. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think 
too many times I think he rubbed some people the wrong way. Right. Because it's not enough people. You know, when you when when everybody feels like you should be in the league, people speak on that. People spoke up on Melo. I don't in press conferences, post game, you know, before the game. Mm-hmm. I don't know why Melo's not in the league. He should be in the league. You know, yeah. people ain't speaking up for IT. Yeah, and it was tough for IT because he he was he almost like ruined his body. Yeah. So that hip injury and everything, trying to just play through stuff. And even when he had those chances, he wasn't healthy. So now it's like, you know, they don't look at that as an excuse. Like, man, you had your time. You shouldn't have been out there if you weren't all the way healthy, right? But again, he's a soldier. He's been working. He's been working. And he's taking sure. and he's paying his dues, right? He's going through playing with this team USA qualifier team. That's a time for him to audition. Yeah. All right. And to show he can lead and do everything else. I'm rooting for him. You know, we love to see it, especially guys who just love the hoop. Yeah, he's, I mean, better man than me. I'm, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm working and showing my, but I'm in, I'm in China somewhere making like two mil, like, yeah. while I'm doing it. I ain't going to just be working out. That, o- that overseas life crazy though. Not for him. Yeah. He, he lives a, he lives a different life story. True. Trust me. It ain't the same. Yeah, true. True. Yeah. Well, then we got um, John Wall. Right, mm-hmm. another guy recovering from injury, escaping from DC, and that earlier in the year we, they talked about how Wall wasn't going to play. They yep. mutually agreed that he was going to sit the year out. Yep. So M- Wall was going to bring in forty four M's without playing a game this year. Yeah, nice, right? But John Wall is a hooper, and I've been seeing the videos, and I've been seeing everything. I've been seeing everything where he looks in shape. He looks good. You know, he looks like he still give ninety percent of the league issues. Yep, ninety percent of the league issues. But now he's like, I want to play. Right, the the Rockets are the worst team in the league. They're not competitive. They look like they're tanking. I don't know what they're tanking for. Right, but they're not competitive at all. But he went to management, told him that he wants to play. Um, you know, Wall is an all star. He's a max guy, deservingly so. He carried a franchise for years. Yep. And he still has a lot left in the tank. Um, and so they talked, they discussed, and they came to a bit of a stalemate because they wanted him to come off the bench. And now, you know, the reports just came out about two minutes ago saying that Wall said, man, I mean, he believes he's a number one option. And let's keep it a <laughs> buck. Like, and then um, how is he not an, a number one option in Houston? What's the record? Not enough wins. Mm. That's what we're gonna say. I not think even close. Not even close. I think they might be like four and fourteen or something like that. I'm gonna check that out. But when is it? When is it a, a looked at and frowned upon? So somebody like him, right? We're talking about John Wall. And do you know outside of the Kevin Porter Jr. Jalen Green, who else is there? Eric Gordon. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I'm- well, what's management thinking? You tell me. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know what Wall's thing. He's thinking, I haven't gotten any calls right now, so I got to sh- prove people that I'm not hurt. Right. I got to I gotta get on the court and show that I can still play. Man, they come off the bench, man. They crazy. That's what I'm saying. Come off the bench, right? And and even though you got two guards that are young that are going to be your cornerstone, they need to learn from somebody. That's probably one of the biggest problems with the league and their growth going forward is there aren't enough vets in locker rooms. There aren't enough of the Eddie Jones, Nick uh, Van Exels and stuff for Kobe to watch, right? Or even MJ, he had Gervin there when he came to to uh, the Bulls, right? Everybody had an OG, somebody who was there that can show them that away. You, somebody that you respect, too. Some, yeah, yeah, and you talked about, KG talked about how, um, was it uh, Sam Mitchell? Sam Mitchell. Right, and those guys, everybody had it. So if anything, the best way for Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. to learn would be to play with John Wall. Yeah, yeah it's, again, that's, an, you know, one of those franchises, man, you know, you got analytics, um, people running the you know, front office and just no real feel for the game. I feel sorry for the coach. Man, another a young black coach. That's young Silas right there. Yeah. So let me see what I got it right here. Um, Eastern Conference. Houston is three and sixteen. <laughs> right? <laughs> Three and sixteen. Yeah. So what are you going to lose by by having him being the number one option? 
right? So you can allow your young bucks to freely go around. Like, does that even make sense? Yeah. That's crazy. Free wall, man. Yeah. Free wall for sure. Um, next on the docket there is uh, Embiid. Embiid just came back from missing uh, eight games because he had COVID, right? So he missed. And in those eight games, Philly was struggling because before he was out, they were number one in the um, in the East. I think they were standing at, at eight and two. I'm not mistaken, because I was talking about how I still think he's going to be MVP. So right now, Philly is Philly is 10 and 10. And so without him, they were struggling. They might have only won two games without him. <laughs> they might have won two and six. But on his first game back, you know, he went up for, uh, let's check, I won't be accurate here. He had 42. He had 42 double overtime against uh, the Timberwolves and ended up losing. Mm. But, you know, him, him dealing with COVID, right? Did you did you get to see him talk about it? No, I didn't. He, t- he said that John had me going crazy. It almost <laughs> put him down, right? He's, John is the Philly language. Philly lingo. You know, yeah. but seeing him recover, um, what do you think that, how do you think they bounce back? They got to grind it out. And here's the thing. He's going to be dynamic the first few games. Then he's going to hit a wall from fatigue. So we got to see how he's going to be able to um, be, cons- you know, return to being consistent. You know, we, he's already had issues dealing with health um, and injury. So let's hope for the best. And, you know, hopefully they can, uh, you know, galvanize around him and uh, and get it going again. But, um, you know, coming back from COVID, everybody struggles a little bit. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I'm sure he put up 42. In the 16th, 21 from yeah. the field. He's on free throw line. That's the monster. Like I said, I, I still think he's going to be in the MVP talks at the end of the year. Him, KD, and Steph. Um, those, are, those are my top three right there. Mm. And I got KD winning it still. And I'm still Lakers in the championship. I still got us winning the ship with, with all this nonsense. Mm. What's interesting, I was watching highlights, and we were playing Braun at the five. <laughs> Braun at the five, Melo at the four. Um, then you had Taylor Horton Tucker and um and and Russ. And I seen Russ in the mid post a little bit too. That be that's good for him. THT should be coming off the bench. Yeah, he I think he I think he was. Okay. We're still playing around with a different different roles. But that's a problem. It's it's too much playing. It's and we still got a couple guys who aren't back. 15, 16 games in, like, come on, man, you can't be yeah. playing around, you know. Now, if you if you're devastated by injuries, then you have no choice. Mm-hmm. But there's only one or two people out each time. Like yeah. you, gotta, you gotta have some consistency in what you're doing. It ain't working, and the Warriors are looking crazy. And yeah. now Wiseman and Clay Thompson are in the G League to get their feet back on. <laughs> They're about to murder them cats. Yeah, that's gonna be nuts. But it is what it is. Now, getting closer to January, February, middle of December, we're going to hear more and more about trade talks. Now, I was always interested in hearing, like, like how do trades work? You know, in 2K and stuff, you can put together mock <laughs> trades and, right, right, and right. see how those things work. But I'm like, 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 how does this go? Like, does a player send a text to a guy and be like, yo, let this person know I'm 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 gonna be on the market soon, whether or not my team knows it or like is it a call between coaches? What is that? Well, things are completely different now because of um, you know, yes. uh the social media age and stuff and, and everybody's connected. You know, it's it's not something that can go on in Sacramento and they don't know about it in Jersey. True. Like that's instant. They know, oh man, that's, he's tri- tripping over there, or whatever. You know, um, so it could be a variety of things. It could be, you know, like how the Heatles got together. Uh, you know, they were met up in the summer, came up a couple of times, and, um, you know, it was on one person's mind, another person's mind, hitting each other up, and then all of a sudden, man, let's make it happen. Um, it could be two coaches that know each other. You know, me and you got a relationship. I can give you a prime example for that. When KG went to the Celtics, Mm. Come on, man. You know, the Celtics robbed the Timberwolves. Yeah. But that was a favor. That's, yeah. You know, Mikhail hooked them up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He took care of Boston. Um, because they didn't get anything in return, really. And so um, it could be two gyms that happen to know each other. It could be 
um, a GM who's close to a certain agency. You know, I mean, it's it's a variety of things, man. Um, you know, there's there's always reports about what happened, whatever, but we we will never know actually, just because it could be a situation where somebody had this planned in the summer. Yeah. You know, and they say, you know, we're gonna wait till like you know late November, early December, and pull the trigger, or whatever. Um, you just don't know. Um, but nine times out of ten in today's era, it's players making it, making the move and saying, hey, you know, um, see, you ain't re- it ain't really working out for you right there. From from your experience, what like how have you dealt with it? Whether you as a coach. And when you were coaching pro or a player, because I didn't know you can get traded in some overseas leagues and depending <laughs> on where you are. I didn't know that was a thing. So, like, do you have anything that you can pull from yours to be like, this is how it went for me when I was coaching or playing? Well, overseas, it won't necessarily be like a trade. It'll almost be like a um, an agreement. If this team wants you, but you have somebody they want and you're both of your imports, they might both release you at the same time. Mm. And then they, they both claim you before you hop on a plane. Mm. Um, you know, in the in the you know, in the minor leagues in the, in the States, you know, whether it be the USBL. Um, and by the way, I was on a team in the USBL. And the USBL back in the day was um like like almost like an NBA summer league. And um the season was we played about uh, I think like maybe 40 games over a um like a two and a half month period, something like that. It was a lot of games, man. And um, we had 62 transactions. Damn. <laughs> That's what I said, man. I was on a team. I was the only person that made it through all those cuts. What region were you in? Was it like Baltimore? I was Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Uh-huh. So Atlantic City was known for having a lot of money. They always, they kept loaded squads. Lo- I mean, loaded. Michael Lloyd, all those guys would be mobbed up and they just run through the league. This is how my luck runs. I finally get there. We ain't got no money. We bankrupt. <laughs> we bankrupt from all the years before. So we went through 60 something transactions, man. We just to give you a quick, a funny story. We're going on a Midwest tour. Um, it's a team in Oklahoma, two teams in Kansas and uh, somewhere else. So we fly out there, you know, we stay, like, you know, nine, 10 days and yeah. we, we play, and then we come back because, you know, it's minor leagues. We get on the plane and um, we only got four players. We got like two cats that can't go because they got warrants. <laughs> um, you, I can't make this up, man. We got like two cats. That can't, we got one cat can't go because he got a full time job. Um, and then and so we get out there. We're on the we in the air. Coach is like, we're our third coach too. Coach is like, Julian, you know, you happen to know anybody that, you know, you played against in college or that was one of your teammates that we could pick up on the road? I said, what? <laughs> so, you know, we making calls and stuff on the, you know, on, you know, when we get, get there and stuff and we pick, as we go from city to city, we pick up a player too. That's funny. It's yeah. crazy, man. It's crazy. Man, you said my man had <laughs> warrants. He couldn't go to the game. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't get on the flight, man, you know. And so, you know, in that situation, you know, it's you know, I've seen I've seen guys get get traded basically, you know, in transit. You know, you pass in another team, you pass in the, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, damn, why? Hey, y'all just going to get some grub. Why the dude got his bags? Mm. He's about to get up out of here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I've seen a guy released in the middle of the night, like three, four in the morning in the middle of Chicago. <sighs> Snow coming down, you know, like crazy. And um, they had already made a decision before we left <clears throat> our hometown where we were playing. They had already made a decision. They was going to trade him. Mm. What? What? And now that's you as a player. And I know it. you as a coach, you've been in those spaces, right? Yeah. So if you as a player, you watching your guy get cut in the middle of the season <laughs> or you watching him get cut in the middle of travel or get traded in the middle of travel, because NBA players talk about that all the time, right. too. Like, damn, there's no courtesy for us. Right. But now you got to see in the backside because you had to deal with that in Canada when you were coaching to <laughs> how you guys get to that point where you got to make that decision and how it has to go. Um, for some people, you you come to that that decision really quickly because they've done something to stand out in a negative way. Right. And it's almost everybody almost knows that, yeah, he ain't got much time. Hmm. You know what I mean? And so um, 
you know, that that's the, those are the easy ones. You know what I mean? Those are the easy conversations. The hard ones are when somebody's busting their ass every day and doing what they're supposed to do. And you see a need elsewhere. Right. And you see a opportunity for upgrade. Mm. You know, you got to, I give you an example, you know, you got a, a backup point guard who's 5'10", um, you know, a couple years experience, and you get a chance to get a five-year vet that's about 6'2". Yeah. And, you know, and you've been struggling a little bit in the backcourt, you know, when you're giving your, um, you know, your your main guys a blow, and you can get the same get the same dude for just a little bit more money, you got to make that move if you're, if you're trying to get mm. deep into the playoffs. You're making that call directly to the, to the management? If if it's a situation where, um, if I have a certain relationship with the GM, where I have that I have that freedom, yeah, you know, I I, I make that call. Um, so it just it just depends on you know, you know, and and that's one of the problems we have in the NBA. Um, you know, it's too often moves are made without the coaches doing. You know, so now you got to deal with the you know, with the results, like, you know, now this player's coming in and you, you had no idea. True. And so now you got to, he may have, he may be completely against what you were trying to do. Mm. Uh, you know, he may not fit in. So now you got to make it work. Otherwise everybody's pointing the finger at you. Now, speaking of that, uh, in trade, I mean, in mid season trade, how do you filter that in as a, as a coach? Like, like how does that transaction work when it comes to on the court play? And transitioning to like, all right, we got a whole new player. Chemistry is going to be different. You know, maybe that lingo of how they understand ice in the screens or whatever is completely different from there. So they got to learn it. So, like, how do you go about that process now? And it, one, it different when it's pros. Yeah. Well, pros, they're pros. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little easier to, to, you know, get through this process because they all know it's a business. Mm -hmm. um, and they know as soon as they get, they touch down somewhere. Most times the terminology is not, you know, that much different, but, you know, typically, especially, you know, in the pros, it's going to be a, a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know, mm -hmm. whether it be before practice, after practice, a couple of times, a meal where you're getting a chance to have an intimate conversation with that player to talk about what his role is you know, on, on the team. And uh, if it's a guy who's coming from somewhere, he's getting heavy minutes. Right. He's, it better be a long conversation True. because his his role may be different. If you're bringing him in to to play a lot, that conversation is going to be with the guy he's going to be taking them, those minutes from. If he's coming in and he's not going to play a lot, but he's coming from a situation where that was his role, then it's not it's not that much of a transition there um, because you get you iron all that out in practice. True. Stuff. Because to believe it or not, even though they're pros and everybody's competing for a spot, once somebody new comes in, everybody's trying to get you ingratiated in what's going on because everybody's trying to win. Facts, facts. Now, when you, when you think about that, you think about the people who get lost in trades and stuff in the league, mm -hmm. right? You might got stories from your friends who are agents or play pro and all that to where now they're like, man, I want to be somewhere stable. Like I need to be somewhere where it's like I can at least know I'll be here for a while, and so they think <coughs> the overseas method or the overseas route is is better, right? right. Um, even even in college, was a lot of us get to the point where we realize we're not going to the league, and then everybody just says it's all right. I'm gonna just go overseas. And for me, I had a little bit more information to where I knew it's like you had it, real time information. Yeah from, yeah, from Coach Roland and myself. Yeah, so I was like, "Look, it don't work like that, partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it don't work like that. Right. Once you get out of there and it's all of y'all competing for a job to go overseas, it's not what you think it is." So, and and I'm we're gonna talk about it just from your perspective because I didn't play. I chose not to go and chase that dream because I understood what those pros and cons were. But for somebody who's listening, uh, let's tell people the real story. What? He had opportunities to go. Yeah. But the kind of grind that he was going to have to take, that was, and people that know Yates and know what I'm talking about, it was beneath him. You know what I'm saying? He a little, Man. he a little sadiddy. This is funny. So, and I'm saying, so he ain't really want, he's like, you know what? I did my time. I had a good run. I'm okay with it. I'm cool. Nah, what and, happened was when I got to uh, college, my guy here abandoned me. 
You know what I'm saying? So I was left to figure out my game on my own and everything, which I did, you know. And then when I needed, I, I looked at all my options. <clears throat> and I had, like, the the journey of, of being a basketball player, it tests you, right? And some people don't get tested really, really hard until maybe mid-college or to the end. And, you know, for me at the beginning, like, even before we got to college, I had to look at it like, well, basketball won't always be there. That's for sure, right? Because I was told that I wouldn't be able to play college basketball for health reasons. So in 18, I was looking at it like, man, what, what am I going to do if I don't play? And so all of college, I was kind of preparing for that. So when I got down and I talked to my uncle and I talked to you about the money they were offering to start, and then I was, and this is for the, some of those people who kind of, you talk about Fugazi, come to people who tell you they're playing overseas just to say they're playing overseas, and they're not really playing for a pro team. They're playing for a club team, club team at a university, and they're not really making any money, right? So I'm already coming from where, like, I'm broke, but I'm, after I get out of college, I'm supposed to make some money. So I, I was working at Nordstrom selling women's shoes, and then I was being a substitute teacher while I was still training. And I was making, I was making solid grip, right? And then I remember my uncle showed me that I think it was somewhere in 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 like England or like Denmark and 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 some like South American country too. So I go, this is how much you would make, blah blah blah. And I was like, what? I'm making that without the stresses of overseas basketball. And then I was like, you know, I ain't really with the risk no more, because I wasn't trying to get to the NBA no more. So I was like, yeah. We'll go do something different. So I went back to grad school, right? If I wasn't going back to grad school, I would have kept trying to play. That's for sure. Because I wasn't with the the corporate America stuff. But when we talk about how you mentally got to prepare for playing overseas, because I was lucky enough to talk to you and and you guys told me exactly what it was going to be. It wasn't no, like, you're going to go over here, you're going to be the man, blah, blah, blah. It's like, look, as soon as you get off the plane, boom, 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 boom. If you don't get paid on this day, you need to go say this. You need to go do that. You need to make sure you do this, this, and this. You won't be able to eat this. You won't be able to have a phone, this and that. And the style of play is different. Yeah. Like, every, it's like a bunch of different things. So let's start there. Right. Let's start there about, like, how the style of play is different overseas. Um, Europe. Especially, mm. um, you know, Western Europe, where basketball is real popular. It's a, uh, it's a lot of spacing, a lot of movement, almost Golden State like. That's why a lot of those, um, you know, a lot of Europeans that come to the NBA that are that are bigs, they don't play like bigs. You know, those guys have been well. I mean, a lot of them have been pro professional players or in professional environments since they were like thirteen, fourteen years old. Um, but. <clears throat> It's a situation where it's an equal opportunity offense. Everybody's getting touches. Everybody's getting looks. Um, and it's, you know, you win as a team, you lose as a team. You know, uh, you mentioned this before. You know, this person right here is, uh, you know, making a lot of bank overseas, you know, and but he's only averaging 15 points. Yeah, he's in the top league in, in Spain. And, um, you know, he's averaging 15 points, which is a lot for them because he's only getting eight shots a game. Yeah. You know, because he's in, he's the import uh, playing on the perimeter. There's another import playing down on the post, on the blocks. And then the point guard is Ricky Rubio. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, you got the top young point guard from Spain, top young small forward from Serbia. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a, a stretch four from Australia. You know, you playing with other guys that are, yeah. that are really good. And so everybody's getting a chance to um, touch the ball and, and do their thing, whatever, within the concept of the um, the offense. Because, you know, those European coaches, you know, they, they like to control the game. Mm. You know, very, very rarely are you going to find a high, le high level league in Europe where, you know, Americans just allowed to go ham. And, yeah. This is very rare. Very rare. That that is something because I, I watch and I look in the um Swiss cultures and a few other outlets are doing a much better job of showing the <laughs> stories and the journeys of those players that we loved in college mm -hmm. as they go overseas. And I, oftentimes I'm looking, I'm like, dang, they're just, they're just getting off 20 points, 21, 22, because you're just used to them seeing used to seeing them put up big numbers. Right. But like you said, 
completely different offense. Yeah. And you're an import, right? So there are locals there. If it's a high level league, if it's a Premier League or A League, that are nice too. And they're local, right? And so they're going to be drawing in the crowd. They're going to be the focal point. And, you know, you don't speak the language, <laughs> right? And all those other things. So you averaging 18 to 20, you could be at, what you said, getting paid three mil. You could, Yeah, you could be getting three mil. Yeah. You're for like the top, you know, you're playing for the top league in Russia or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, everybody can play us on the floor. Um, yeah. But... <clears throat> But then you have those other leagues. Yeah, but I said that, that's just Europe. Europe is, is well, I mean, but the top. That's the, if out of all of overseas, Europe is the top level. You talk about the top few teams in in Russia. You talk about Italy. Talk about Spain. A um, couple teams in France. A couple teams in Germany. I'm just I'm just talking about the top ones. You know, a team or two from Serbia. Couple teams from Australia. Then back in the day, Argentina used to have a couple of top. That used to be one of the top leagues in the mm -hmm. world too. Sure, I love to go to Argentina um, right now because Boca Juniors used to always have a mob. Um, you know, it, it kind of you know goes back and forth because everybody's gotten better now. Yeah. Um, but you know, we talk about those guys averaging fifteen to eighteen points, but then there's, <laughs> then there's the next level. Yeah. Where you got to be Jordan, right? You know what I'm saying. Where I was, like, uh -huh. you know, you come in there, you had 24, and they're looking at you like, that's it? Right. You're like, man, I left a leg out there. You know what I'm saying? True. And so uh, it's a little different, you know, where you got to bring the ball up, create your own shot, rebound your own miss, stop the top score on the other squad. You know what I'm saying? Hold everybody together mentally. I mean, it's a lot. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand that in order to get to the higher ranks, you got to go through that sometimes. Yeah. And then you got to worry about getting, um, getting the stigma of being, oh yeah, he's just second league player. Right. You know what I'm saying so. You may never get the opportunity to, to show what you can do on the top league. So like, well, first, cause let's talk about what the different area of the world says about the game you'll be playing. Okay. Right. So <laughs> if I go to Australia and that BBL league or whatever it's called is different. If I'm playing in the Middle East, it'd be different. Right, because there's a few teams in the Middle East, not in the UAE, but um, if we talk about Israel. Saudi, yeah, Israel, Qatar, right? They got some teams and some some games that are big. Then if I'm playing in South America and or in Europe, like how does the style of play change based on the region of the world? South America predominantly is going to be run and gun. Mm -hmm. You know, you as an import stepping off the plane, you got to be the leading scorer. Right, you ain't the leading scorer in South America. You're probably gonna get up out of there. Hmm. That's just that's just how they roll. They they want to see and they're entertainers. Right, you know what I'm saying. They want to see fast pace, get up and down. If you can dunk, dunk the ball. If you shoot threes, put it up. Um, <clears throat> Europe, a little more refined, you know, a little more skilled in terms of um, be a jack of all trades and almost a master in everything. Right, you know what I mean. Okay. Just because you got to be able to handle the ball. Got to be able to uh, score. More skilled players. Got to be able to pass. Got to be cerebral. Um, <clears throat> a little more under control. Um, and, you know, at the, and at the same time, when every when things get tight, you got to bail them out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now you got the freedom. Oh, oh you know, do your thing now. Tyrese Rice. Well, <laughs> now, you know, we, you know, we in a hole. Australia is a little more, um, it's, a, it's like in the middle. You know, they get up and down, but you know, they're under control and stuff too. Um, but the the vast differences is between um, Europe and South America. And, you know, and of course we know China. Mm -hmm. If you're a big, you better rebound the ball, block shots. You know, if you can score, now you really got a job over in China forever. But all the guards going to China, man, you better put that thing in the hole. You see yeah. Jimmer for that. Yeah. You don't score, if, you don't score 30. Yeah. You, you coming home. There's yeah. 70 pieces and stuff yeah, out right. there. Yeah. For sure. What about the Middle East, though? From um, what you know of and have known of. Um, you know, outside of, you know, the Israeli leagues, everything in the Middle East is, is kind of like Americans got to do a little bit of everything, um, run the show. And uh, depending on your particular team, you know, you you got to get numbers because the level of play isn't as isn't as um, high in terms of the local player. Yeah, you know what I mean, some of course in every league in every in every country there's 
the top teams, then there's some bottom feeders. But more so, you know, here where we've seen, you know, especially in Dubai, you know, even some former NBA players got to come here and they got to get busy. Yeah, because the locals, basketball is not their it's, one or t- number one or two thing on their list. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not their escape route. Yeah, you know what I mean, some other countries, you know, you get a chance to get to the higher leagues and make some money. You know, it's a it's a it's a way of life. You know, a, a change of life in a positive manner for your family, even for the locals. You know, right? some of the some of the countries, some of the guys here, yeah, you know, whatever. My range yeah. is my range. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm getting here, but but let's say if I'm a if I'm a point guard, two guard, right? Where do I want to go? I want to break it down that way. Like if I'm coming out, me as a wing, right? Where do I want to go? What part of the country? If I have to start off with. You know, I have to go through the the ranks. I you, I'm, I'm gonna just use you as an example. Your skill set. Yeah. You would be great in second division Australia. Yeah, absolutely perfect. You would be great in um, filling in a spot on a mid middle of the pack team in Pro B France. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're because you're you're like a do it all type of guy. Mm-hmm. You know, if they need they need some buckets tonight, you can provide that. They need you to stop the other guy, slow him down. That you can provide that. Mm-hmm. You're a guy that you understand the flow of the game. Man, we really need to hit the hit the boards tonight. Yeah. That's you, and you're you're a plug guy. You're filling the hole guy, and so you will be good in places like that. Um, First league Germany because there's so many. There's more Americans now. Yeah. Back when I played, there was only two Americans. Now there's like you can have up five, I think. You'll be great in one of those situations because um, you're not a – you wouldn't be a guy that wouldn't be tripping if he was a starter. You're like, yeah. I'm just trying to win because if we win, we all going to get, you know, get bags and we all going get, to get new contracts and things like that. Um, second league, you got to – you got to – unless you're one of the top teams, one or two, you got to do everything. So, yeah. um, you know, you you would fit in almost anywhere. South America, you might be like, I'm going home. Yeah. Because, passion. you know, them cats, you could – you, you know, you get a six, seven hour flight, you get there and you're thinking you're going to the hotel. No, nah, you right. get in a taxi. We're going to the game. True. The, true. the team, yeah, the team is two hours ahead of us. We got to catch them. You got to get there and play. Yeah, that's nuts. So if if I'm a big, right, if, if if some bigs out there and, you know, you got your stretch big and then you got your traditional rim protector, you know, running rim to rim get dunk, jump, and then you got your stretch four or five who can, you know, face up and shoot the three. Like, where are you sending them if they can't go top league? If they didn't go D1 and don't have the name of a ACC or whatever behind them and they just got to work their way through. Where where do they start? I'm I'm trying to send them to Europe. Yeah. If I send, you send them Latin America, they, they may not make it, again, unless they're like in a top team where – they just got to fill one role. Right. You know, but typically in South America, even if you're a big, you got to come in and get buckets too. Yeah. So I'm sending them somewhere in Europe just because that's a place where the coach is going to say, mm, good athlete, cleans the glass, you know, clogs the middle. You know, he can find a role for us because he's got a stretch four. Right. That's, that's launching threes from, you know, from the Ukraine or something like that. He's got a, you know, a real crafty point guard. He's got a shooting guard that can really fill it up. He's got a three that's, you know, in and out. So, yeah, you just fill a role there, you know. Mm-hmm. You, um, so I'm, I'm definitely Europe. And plus there's more places, more options there. Okay. Now, a point guard, right? Now, you're talking about a point guard in both sense. Combo and more traditional. And traditional, but with the, you know, new age flavor of I can go get it done offensively if I have to, but I want to. Go first. Where are you sending the combo and where are you sending the tradition? The combo, um, you know, that could be somebody's, uh, um, you know, like Italy A2 where you got to get buckets. Mm-hmm. Um, top league Italy, you know, you're more of a just a control guard. You know what I mean? Um, sending a combo guard that gets buckets. Latin America. Right. You can do <laughs> that's the one. You can do your thing. Um, you know, of course, um Asia. Uh get buckets, combo guard. Let me think of a good pl- another good place in Europe. Um t- most of the top leagues in Europe, 
mm-hmm. you know, even the, the, the point guards who get buckets, you know, mm-hmm. you, you're still talking to very few guys going to be getting over 20. Yeah. That's just, that's just that's how it rolls, tough. you know. In China. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, China, that's where we get buckets, right? Yeah. Yeah. But now let's say that you got to travel, right? And you got to start second league or third league. Where, what's the most respected area? Do I go to France and start second league, third league there? And and am I feeling like, all right, if I get good film here, I, even though I'm starting second or third league, I'll get a chance to jump up next year or three years? Like, where do you want to go if your dream is to ultimately get to that top league in Spain? So it's, two, it's two different ways you look at it. Do, am I trying to get, um, am I trying to go to the most respected league to move up to get to the NBA? Mm. Or am I trying to get the most money? Mm. You know what I mean, because if you're if you're just trying to get money, yeah, you're going to Asia, right? Okay, <laughs> the grip is different. Yeah, um, if you're trying to move up in terms of solely trying to get into an NBA summer league, then you want to be Europe. Like Pro B France is the second league there. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Leb Leb Two is Spain. Mm-hmm. You know, A A A Two is you know Italy. Um, you you know you think about Second league, Germany, um, because you're trying to get to the top league in Germany, which is, you know, respected. Um, You know, the other leagues, you you know, if you're first league, Austria, first league, Switzerland, um, you know, um, Czech Republic, um, you know, those level leagues there, you got to go to do work. You know, if what, you, what is what does do work sound like? Because some people have different definitions of what that is. Somebody would come back home and be like, "Yo, I was killing. I was averaging eighteen and nine. Nah, nah. If if you're averaging eighteen <clears throat> in your knee? in Switzerland or, or something like that in the first league, that means your your other import was nice too, and you got a and you got a pretty good team. That's different. But I'm just saying, like. Almost every league, just say there's 10 teams in the league. After that, those first four or five teams, man, everybody else is bottom feeder. Right. So you're you're fighting to keep that team in the league. Because mm. if you if you go outside that top eight, you might be going to the next league. And right. so then um you you might be in a playoff situation after <laughs> the season's over. Just everybody else is booking. You're still there. Those two teams might be fighting two other teams in the third trying to See who's gonna go up, stay up. Sheesh. Yeah, so you ain't. Yeah, yeah, you ain't. Yeah, yeah. so you gotta figure that out. Yeah. All right. So, where are you sending that traditional point guard? Um, Europe for sure. Say, yeah, I, like pro, give pro you, basket. That's the best way you can get to play your pro game the best, and you got best yeah. options around yeah. you. Um, you know, of course, I I, mean, I can say his name, Darren McClinton. Mm. You know, we co. You know, you played McClinton. against his brother, Kevin McClinton. Um, Darren is. He's a guy played the James Madison. He could, he could get it, but that wasn't what he does. Mm-hmm. His job, he was a stabilizer, not turning the ball over, getting the ball to the right person, right time, right space, and hitting shots when it was his turn. He always stayed getting really good European jobs. Yeah, you know, and orchestrating the offense with good teams because the coaches understood he's a pro. Yeah. You know, he's not coming in concerned about whether he scores 30 or not. He's going to do what it takes for the team to win. I'm going to run. I know you got the number two um, 17-year-old or maybe um, 22-year-old Serbian shooting guard, the 6'6", that's mm-hmm. going to the league soon. Yeah, Darren's going to make sure he gets the rock. Yeah, you know see, that I mean? reminds me of um, one of the OGs, the real OGs from Alexandria. Um, everybody talks about Keith Bogans a lot too, but Amar Smith. Amar Smith played at St. Bonnie's. Um, he went to O'Connell though. He went to private school. I think he played with Ginyard. He might have his jersey retired there too. But he played at St. Bonnie's and then he played overseas. I mean, he might be like eight, nine, ten year run. Like he just got back home and was around. I remember training with him and stuff. And playing with him, Amar the big guard, left hand, well, my height. PG, just like that, control everything. He, he gonna play at his pace. He gonna make sure everybody <laughs> get what he get done. And he can get lefty. So he gonna get to his spots and get his shot off the way he want, whenever he want. And he gonna knock it down at that time. Would you talk about knowing how to play a pro's game and everybody knowing when they can count on when you get in and, and then that equating to wins. 
Yep. And when you get to those higher levels and you're a pros pro, if you can always be associated with winning and directly affecting that, career is going to be long standing and, 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 and coachable. Man, like, a lot of a lot of um, you know overseas coaches they they don't deal strong they don't deal with strong personalities. Yeah, you've seen them come to the league and you, you know, they struggle sometimes. You know. Yeah, no, that's true. All right, so I got a, I got a couple questions. So we talked about um, the money difference, difference, right? Okay. So I've I've had we've talked to different people that play overseas and that even even here, um, and you know we've had our friends and my friends. Some people ask, like, "Yo, hey, Coach King, ask him this," and you'll always tell me to be to talk to him and be like, "Look, if he's already making six rocks right here, and he's not, even though it's not the competition level he wants." He got to really sit and think about if he want to leave that, <laughs> right? Like, you making 6K, all right, you got to deal with that, you know what I'm saying, lower competition, but you getting your money on time. You're here in the so-and-so area, and it's beautiful, and it's dope, and you want to leave there to go where? But tell me, like, talk about what those things are that you need to consider yeah. before you make a move out of certain places. That kind of goes back to what we talked about. Are you trying to further your career at the highest leagues or are you trying to provide for your family? Right. You know what I mean? So <laughs> if, you're, if you're sitting somewhere, you're getting paid on time, they appreciate you. Hold on, hold on. Don't just scroll past that one. Right. Talk about getting paid on time. Pay, all right. That's that's one, like... <laughs> all right, first, people don't... A lot of people at home may not know when you're overseas, you get paid one time a month. Right. One, unless you're certain countries in South America, you might get paid every two weeks or every week, you know, but most times it's once a month. Yeah. Is so, there a union or something that makes sure you get paid? What? <laughs> they know. It, come no. on, you can send a letter in the FIBA. And they yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I've seen so many people, and I've seen years where they were like, you know, things have changed this year. We're do man, get out of here. <laughs> I've seen a situation where guys were not getting paid and – the team hasn't paid. Listen, no representative from the team has even been around in five weeks. And you're sitting there waiting. What you know, and I'm yeah. like, look, bro, you, when you get you ain't got paid yet, you might as well go home, man. You might as well go home and vacate this apartment. What? Yeah, I mean, you you only stay, you only hang around if one, your agent got something else cooking for you. Two, you got a little money put away where you can have some fun before you go. But other than that, man, you go home. And, you can, and they, they done. You know, <clears throat> certain situations, I've seen guys come in and, and a little too arrogant because we are the Americans. You know, we were the imports. And this is my era. Your era now, the world is getting better. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, you could come in and you could talk big talk, but you had to back it up. And I've seen I've seen a rookie come in and pop crazy smoke, <laughs> crazy. And then I'm I'm sitting there like, oh man, this this cat better he better, better deliver. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's asking for this, this, for that. You know what I'm saying? And you know, get out there and lay a goose egg. Mm. And then, he ain't know, score, man. You know, I'm talking about. You know, you might score, yeah, but, but you're supposed yeah, to get twenty. Yeah, you got yeah, you got five. Yeah. And so now. Now they're looking at you funny. And, and every you'll see little subtle things like your driver stops showing up. You know, the general manager all of a sudden stops speaking English. <laughs> Come on, man. The trainer ain't got no tape. You know what I'm saying? You know, your, your favorite water bottle that said JK14 on it ain't there no more. Hey, listen. You know what I'm saying? When you, yo, don't let me come to the locker room. And everybody talking to you, cool. And then and then they talk to me. No, no, no way. Yeah. I don't speak English. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yesterday I'm, it was all good. It was all good. I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen it happen, man. I've seen it. I'd be like, yo, you know what? That little broad you had, you might as well go see it, have some fun. Cause <laughs> you your time's over. It's a wrap. It's over. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And um, that's just just the way it is, man. It's, Man. It's, it's dog eat dog, you know. So if you're getting paid on time, you're getting your right amount of money. You got to think about any moves that you want to make in terms of is the money that much more? Is it safe money? 
Hmm. Um, is it a better living situation? Because you might be, <laughs> some teams l- value it like this. We'll pay you a little bit more, but your living conditions suck. Right. And some other teams say, you know what? We're not paying you that much, but we got to hook up on a nice apartment. So all of our Americans live pretty good. You know what I'm saying? You might be, you might be making, say, 4,000 USD. And when I say this, I'm talking about like late 90s. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of bread, no yeah. taxes. And you got a, um, you got an older car. Mm-hmm. I had a, in 2000, like 2000, I had like a, like a 93 Maxima or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I thought you was going to say what that purple P2 Cruiser you had. Nah, it wasn't purple. <laughs> it was black. I had that in Germany. Actually, it's looking like. Actually, for those of you who don't know, when you have an American car in Europe, it was stylish. Yeah. It was, yeah. Every, it was on me. Yeah. It was black. I had chrome rims, sunroof, all that. It was, yeah. It was sweet. Okay. It looked like yeah. Manny Fresh. Hey, <laughs> Gator. You know what I'm <laughs> so, um, so, so, so the other teams might. Um, pay you a little bit more and your car might be worse than that. Or you might have a real nice car and get paid less. So, you know, you just got to pin, you know, see what your situation looks like and really, really think about it because you could, you could go somewhere and the GM might be bringing you in. The coach may not like you, Mm. you know? So. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, but with even those contracts, you're talking about somebody not getting paid on, on time. Those contracts themselves, like I've seen people sign stuff and not go anywhere. Come on, man, it's Fugazi, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's the, what. What are the signs? What do you have to watch out for? Like, how do you know when it's safe money, right? How do you know when it's going to fall through? And do first, you and do you need an agent? Do you really need an agent to get across? All right. First, how do you know some signs? If a team asks you for money. No, oh, yeah. You're, yeah, and yeah. You don't, you don't mess with them. For sure. They, it's food gate. That's, that, you may not be talking to a real team. Facts. They you know scam, what I'm saying? They Scammers. Um, or some teams might say, you get your own ticket over and we'll reimburse you. That's the team that's going to get you over there. They looked at your profile because remember, my era, there was no social media. Like we couldn't just WhatsApp a video over or anything like that at the time. Cause WhatsApp was only like, like 2008, 2009. So you had to like fax something over mm-hmm. or physically mail um, a VHS that table. That might take or, weeks to get there. You know what I'm saying? Um, might cost you 80 bucks to send it over. And so you might be listed as six, seven. You get there, you six, four. Right. I didn't say six four, six five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they looking at you like, oh man, this cat. So you need know, you, trying out. Yeah, you trying out. And then with people, a lot of people don't know the standard contracts for guys who aren't like ex NBA players or big time college players or somebody with a powerful European agent or or you know or Latin American agent. You're on a trial anyway. Mm. Your fifth, your first fifteen to thirty, you're on a trial anyway. Hmm. Anyway, you don't even know it. You're a rookie. You don't even know it. Dang. So yep. If you don't, when you get off that plane. Yep. So you, you learn these things right here where y'all want me? Okay. When I get off the plane, you got to have this amount. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You give me that amount, take me to my spot. Let me mm-hmm. check my spot out. And then, you know, I need this, this, and this. You know, I need... Uh, gas money. Um, I need that, you know, you got to set me up at a restaurant. Can I get three meals there or one meal there, one meal there, one meal there. It's because saving my bread. Um, do What kind of game bonuses do I have? What kind of bonuses we have, you know, in terms of individual performance, team performance, um, away games, road games, all that stuff adds up. Because mm-hmm. that's your, you know, that's your trick money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you want to take the rest of it and kind of, you know, put it away. Um, you know, when do we get paid? Uh, when's the last game of season? You know, um, can I negotiate tickets to go to the crib for, you know, um, for Christmas? Right. Or, if, you know, or is that, inv- you know, automatic anyway? So, you know, there's a lot of little things, man, you you work towards in terms of trying to um, upgrade your contract and stuff. But a lot of that stuff, man, pfft, you lucky. I don't care if you're making two mil. You're lucky to get 75% of that. 
Right, right, right. I've heard that too. Yeah. You know, remember <laughs> when Iverson went overseas? Yeah. The, yeah Tur- he went to Turkey. It, Turkey. Turkey's got some teams that pay bread, but they got some teams that pay bread when they want to. Right. <laughs> and he was, I think it was Fazekas. He was on one of those teams where like some of them dudes like sign for big money, man. They may not get it. Right. Yeah. That's why Asia was the lick because you, you're going to get paid. You, you get your stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so with, with that being said, what are some of the biggest lifestyle changes that, um, and I know it was different for you because of media and social media and email, but for the young bulls that you got over this overseas these last decade or so, and you've talked to them, um, I'm thinking of shoot, for example, right? And a lot of them that ended up just coming back and was like, nah, this ain't for me. Or like, uh, or some people that end up staying was like, I'm gonna make this work. What are some of the lifestyle changes that they ended up talking to you about? For, well, first and foremost, it's um, being away from from home. Always. You know, um, homesick and, um, like I said, you know, uh, uncomfortable in unfamiliar environment, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, some some guys can't deal with being out of the DMV, you know, because they're used to being a 7-Eleven there or, you know, Popeye's there or whatever, and like, you know, not not realizing, you know, you're in a little village somewhere like two hours outside of Paris. You right. know what I mean? So you just, lifestyle change, you got to deal with that. But that's where, especially nowadays, you got to open your mind, open your eyes and say, you know what, I'm out of the country. <sighs> this is, you have way more opportunities now to enjoy your surroundings mm-hmm. and 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 travel and do things like that. You know, we ain't know that. Like, you guys can... You can get on this right here and go anywhere in the world. True. And, oh, yeah, where am I right now? Oh, I'm there. I didn't know I was that close. Yes, we ain't had, we had to pull out a physical map. Right. So right. If, had, if I had to pull that map out and it was in German, I wouldn't go nowhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? saying? Right here. So, you know, just, you know, being away from home, being away from family and things like that, which I don't think it should be that big of a deal now because, you know, I was along Skype was coming up. There's too many ways to stay in contact with family right. now, but some people are just different, you know. Yeah. They like to, you know, be in comfortable environment, um, surroundings all the time. Um, the food, hmm. food. Are you <clears throat> one? Are you willing to try new things? Um, two. Are you willing to do things for yourself? Mm. Are you willing to cook for yourself, clean for yourself, go grocery shopping for yourself? Um, you know, those are some of the things. And those grocery stores different. Yes. Yeah, those, that, the size and the portion, all, all, all that stuff different. Uh, <laughs> for sure. And so that's the thing, you know, you would think that a lot of guys coming from, directly from college, they'd be kind of used to it. But that goes to show you the difference in colleges now. True. You think about everybody that's been to college in terms of being an athlete, well, even just an uh, average student. It's it's five times better than when you went there. Yeah, everything's better. <laughs> even even now, and I yeah. haven't been out of college a, a while. Like right. just something has Im- something has improved incrementally, like since you've been out. And you're sure. like, like, man, um, language barrier, big. You know, luckily for Americans, most of the world speaks English as a second language. Yeah, at least a little bit of it. Yeah, mo- we're lucky. But you could be somewhere where nobody speaks English. How much patience do you have? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, we talk about like just socializing. Yeah, I'm sure that changes the social life. Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, if you you find you you see somebody that's attractive, whatever, and you you link up with eye contact, whatever, but you get together, you can't know, speak. And y'all can't say. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be hard to yeah. you know vibe with each other. Um, you know, weather plays a big part because some places uh, like Germany, Denmark, you know, man, it's dark all the time. Man. And cold. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you got to be, you know, willing to make that adjustment. And in some places, it's hot all the time, you know. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of different things, man, that people don't really dive into when they talk about a player going overseas, yeah. you know, they just automatically say, no, man, if it doesn't work out for you, you don't, if the um, Houston Rockets don't pick you up and just go overseas. 
it ain't that easy for everybody. Nah, it, you know, it ain't mentally yeah. or physically, right? Yeah. But so, so what is it? We I see some players overseas, and I'm like, man, he should be on the NBA roster, right? Right, like. But what's what's that difference? What what is it about certain players that allow them to go overseas and go great, and they can't do that in the league? Or what is keeping an NBA team from offering them? Or you know maybe that guy doesn't want it because he'll make more money, has more things going there. But what is it? What's the difference between some of those people who are successful overseas and they aren't getting their shot in the league? Well, for the guys who are talented enough and not in the NBA. It's one opportunity. You know, always, yeah. They always they always say nobody wants you until one person. True. One person likes you. Then all of a True. sudden everybody likes you. Um two, there could be a bad rap on you. Mm. You know, um something that that's going around that you supposedly did or you maybe have a bad attitude and nobody wants to deal with you. Um three you just may not fit in anybody's scheme. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jimmer, Jimmer for yeah, that. Yeah, he comes to mind because, you know, he's a guy that you never heard anything negative about in college. But once he bounced around from, a, you know, one or two NBA teams, they said that he was uncoachable in terms of he didn't want to accept his role in terms of being a spot up shooter, uh, short minute guy. He wanted the ball in his hands. He wanted things to run through him. So you're not going to just come into the NBA and get that. Now you you, yeah. you either got to take it or you got to earn it. And so maybe being in China is his yeah. is his spot because they don't want you to do nothing but get buckets. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to worry about no leadership. None of that stuff. Just True. get buckets, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, and the, and the guy, the teams that, you know, won't pull, you know, pull the trigger and bring somebody over, you know, maybe they're, trying to get you to develop a little bit. Maybe they're trying to get you to grow up a little bit more. Like the Spurs. Yep. Spurs do that really well. Yep. Um, like a little incubator outside the country. Because most most foreign players that come to the States that have been playing professionally overseas, you know, um, they come over, they don't have as many issues. True. Because they've been, prof they've been treated as professionals since they were 13, 14 years old. True. So they have a different self-discipline because it's been ingrained in them. And also... Um, some of them, you know, we talk about growing up in the hood and stuff and being in, in some bad environments. Some places overseas, way worse than, yeah, yeah. than Cabr you know, I'm, you say I'm old, I'm talking about Cabrini Green in Chicago, but a lot of places were way worse than North Philly. Right. You know what I mean? You you talk about some places in Eastern Europe or some places in Latin America. Listen. There's different. I don't care what set you claim. You ain't, no, nah, you'd be like, you want me to go down there? No, nah, I'm good. I'm chilling. Yeah, you know. Man, so. That's real. Man, that, but for all those people that are out there, still chasing your dream, still making it happen, going through all of those things, not getting paid on time, dealing with disgruntled coaches and stuff, but still pushing for the love of the game, we salute you. Yeah. You sure. know, uh, you are, your story is important. Um, it's, it's inspirational for sure. And for you that that go through all those things and then find your success at the end, that's love. That's why we play, yeah. you know. Um, if, if, if you're still playing and trying to pursue your dream and it's not affecting your family in a negative manner, keep going because you never know when it's going to be your time. True. Um, True. Because you could always think of it this way. If you are a true hooper, especially living in the States, and you come back home and you've kind of given it up prematurely, it's gonna burn. it will haunt you. Yeah. And, and this is a fact right here. Everybody that played ball and you're not playing professionally, but you're healthy, you will show up somewhere in some gym or some park in the States against your peers and you'll try to kill each other mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. So you might as well try to pursue your dreams and get paid for it because we know we'll all go to work, text each other, yo, after work, we're going to meet up at, we're going to meet up at the Y right. and we're going to play and everybody's trying to kill each other. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to play that hard for free, you might as well try to yeah. live your dreams, man. So mm -hmm. don't, so don't feel bad. Don't get discouraged if things ain't going your way. 
keep pushing as long as you can. You know, as long as you, you know, like I said, it's not affecting your family negatively. Mm-hmm. You know, keep keep going, man. Keep going. And on the flip side of that, you got to know when to give it up. Yeah. In, like, injuries. Right. Um, and even to like what you should, what you should consider. Like I said, I talked about like I had a clear cut list of what to consider before making a decision because of you and Uncle Ro and like how to weigh my pros and my cons to where it was like, all right, this, this, this thing happened if you go. And then five years after, this is what you'll be dealing with. Will you be prepared? Blah, blah, blah. But like what to consider when you like, should I go or should I stay? You know what I'm saying? So like for me, you guys told me like, look, you go, right? Maybe the lifespan for a pro athlete basketball player is five years. You got five good years to make your dough or try to make your dough. But after you finish that five year run, you better have at least this much saved up, right? Because now when you come back, if you've been tricking off your money, you don't have no dough saving. Now you competing against that new year, that new group of college graduates that new group of uh, businesses, everything else that's coming. And your resume only say college basketball, I mean, professional basketball player. Right. And unless you're going to work at the rec or whatever else in the sports world, it's kind of tough for you to compete in the corporate space. So now you got to see, do you have enough tools to compete? And is that outlook going to be enough for you to make it? Yeah. I remember when you, you brought that situation up to me and um, I said, they're going to pay for grad school? Yeah. You're like, yeah. I was like, I did the math in my head real quick. I was like, considering the entry entry level job you would have playing basketball, that that graduate degree is going to triple that. Mm-hmm. So it's a no brainer. Yeah, it's a no brainer. That and you know, with your health, it was a no brainer. You know, and that's you know, your health issue was the issue in terms of why you'd have to take entry yeah. level jobs. So it's not it's not worth it. Okay, you know, you don't want to be somewhere. Um, you know, in in the middle of Colombia somewhere on a bus getting pulled over by the gorillas. Uh, that's a story I'll tell y'all later about. With chickens and, on the bus, right? You know what I'm saying? That was a different place. Oh, yeah. That was different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, you know, you have a health issue there. Right. Um, yeah, it's yeah. different. Yeah. I got hurt once in, in Latin America. And they're like, oh, we we have a hospital for... No, you don't. <laughs> take, just take me to the airport. But you... you no, I'm good. Yeah. Let me go to the crib. I just need like a week or two. Let me see my doc. I'll come back. Yeah. But, if you know, in certain places in Europe, I was like, oh, I'm good. I'll-. That's another thing. Medical and different outside of the country. Yeah. That's why, man, thank God for being in Dubai, UAE. We really don't have any of those struggles, right? It's, it's some things that got to catch up. They got to get better and everything. But, like, life stuff, like, just, just the basic. Yeah, you a hooper and a job comes up in the UAE. Don't even hesitate. Easy money. Don't even hesitate. Easy money for sure. Um, but yeah, that's that's important. We need better decision makers. And now in basketball, with the business of basketball growing, there's so many things you can do and still have your antennas in the game. Yep. If it's not playing pro, and you can make you know a considerable amount of money with that, right? It's way it's way more options. So. Um, that was good. So for all, this is going to be a good one for those people striving to play overseas and do those things. This is going to be something nice for them. I hope y'all found that information useful. Um, you know, as we, we get to wrap it up, we're going to head into our post game wrap up. You know, that was a good game. Yeah. So what would you, what you got for us? Um, something that's been said before, um, say what you mean, mean what you say. Ooh. And this is for, I don't know who it was. You know, because I, I ain't really checking the social media and all that stuff. I only go by what you say, mm-hmm. and I trust you like family. Yes, yes. You know, if don't be one of these guys or young ladies. We don't know. Yeah. And I don't want to make assumptions, but don't be somebody that's an internet gangster. <laughs> you know, you pop a lot of trash, but you don't show your face. You don't identify yourself. Come on, man. If you got something to say, say what you say. Say what you want to say. You stand by it, you know, and we get an opportunity, we argue it. Yeah. That's what we, this is an open forum here. Yeah. But I don't like people who got something negative saying a nasty, yeah. negative tone, and then we don't know who you are. That's Come on, that's not gangster. Yeah, yeah. That's cowardly. 
Yeah, yeah. You know? Standing on your chin toes, yeah. right? Co- Coach is referring to on, uh, this is how I was like, I think the podcast is going up because we had somebody, um, somebody, you know, I don't know if they were trolling, but they got on our uh, comments and they were talking a little crazy, you know, saying, saying some things, inviting us to some places, saying some wild things, calling us some names. And I was like, whoa. Okay, podcast going up a little bit. Yeah. And then I went to the page and it was a private account, of course. You know, it was funny for me because, you know, it's social media. I deleted it though. But I think we're going up. So OG was like, yo, we'll play those games. Yeah, we'll, we'll address <laughs> issues like that. We'll man. play those games. But yeah, always say what you mean, mean what you say, stand on those. Um, I, from right now, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird time. Um, Virgil Abloh, the the owner of Off White, the clothing line, he just passed away yesterday. Cancer, right? Cancer, and nobody knew. You know, it, it reminded me too much about Chadwick Boseman's Boseman. untimely death. Rest in peace. To where they both were secretly um, fighting the battles of their life, but still giving us people, giving their legacies, you know, some of their greatest work while still suffering in there. Um, and it's just a reminder of, you know, every day could be your last, right? Every moment this could be the last episode. Um, this could be the last time you have this meal, that meal. And and so love those, love on those that you have around, love on those um, people that you get to enjoy the time with, cherish those moments, um, and take the time to be present. You know, we... For business purposes, we always have to look forward, right? But because we're looking forward, sometimes we don't get the chance to appreciate what we've done in the midst. Um, because you know, if it's all gone tomorrow, we still got we still had the chance to do this, right? So, be present in your moment. You know, show love as much as you can, receive the love as much as you can, and just be thankful for our daily interactions because it's not a guarantee. Um, As always, thank you guys for your time, your ear. Uh, We appreciate you. Dubai, UAE, if you are around, you can come. Uh Uh-huh. You can come check us out. Who Mountain DXB, Who Mountain Dubai, Who Mountain AE. We're here. Come chat with us. Stay tuned for, you know, some new announcements coming up for Who Mountain. Um... As always, keep it real, keep it simple, and keep going.